Good day to everyone. Thank you for coming back to watch one or more of the videos where we will talk about the word cooperation. I really want to emphasize with this topic three important aspects and you will probably study it more as I have probably the opportunity to open up these questions in your mind. Before we do so, please just bow our heads so we can ask God for guidance. Heavenly Father, we come to you because we depend on you. We want to learn more about many topics. And the one today is very important for the end times. As we see the enemy trying to destroy his church, but we know that you have a solution for us. Please teach us more than this word, cooperation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like to compare three things in this topic today. Number one, I would like to compare cancer. You all know about cancer because it's a disease that has been destroying many people. But the question is, what is cancer? Let me explain what we call the theory of vitamin D deficiency on the formation of cancers. If you see one cell beside another one, Biologically speaking, we know that the cells are united one with the other one with some kind of particles, protein channels, places where the cells are attached to each other and also communicate with each other. They are called tight junctions. The tight junctions of the cells, as I said, they are basically like protein channels where the cell will send some molecules to the other cells in the surrounding to communicate with them or share things with them. Therefore, we know that this tie junction must be really good between cells. When the vitamin D3 is deficient, we know that these tie junctions are not the same. They are basically damaged also. Therefore, if we don't have enough vitamin D3, there is a risk of the formation of bad communication in the cells comes. Once the cells are not having enough or good tight junctions between them, and the communication in between the cells and the sharing between the cells is damaged, the cells starts to recognize himself as a foreign body or a different entity. They do not share with each other the same goals, the same plans, the same work that they are doing. <clears throat> That's why the cancer cells will start to see themselves as a something different from the group where they are coming from. They are starting to differentiate sometimes also because they don't see themselves as part of the group of cells where they are. Reason why when someone has a cancer cell forming, the group of cells will make a new shape. You see things in a different form. Those cells then start to do their mission into going into other places of the body and we call it metastasis. In this case, we see the differentiation of the cells was the variation of the DNAs and the epigenetics. And then after that, they don't stay there only. They actually go invading other places in the bodies where we call metastasis. And then the malignant cells go into the stream, entering the lymphatic circulations, continuing the metastatic work. So there are basically two aspects that are destroyed in this. <clears throat> there are basically two aspects that are destroyed in the communication of the cells. Number one, in the uh, tight junctions. One is the communication of the cells, and the second is sharing of the cells, one with the other one. Don't forget those two because we will go back to them. The next aspect that I would like to share with you is the older brother or elder brother of the prodigal son. Many times when we read the Bible, 
and Luke 15. We focus on the prodigal son because we see his need and how he actually developed into repentance by the love of his father. But let's read some of it again as we see some of the verses. I will not read the whole thing. You may have heard about it. You may have read it many times before. We talk a lot about the prodigal son and how he came back to his father. But I would like to focus in the elder brother of the prodigal son. As we see the language of the Bible and we see what he says and how he approaches, we will see that there are some characteristics in it that are not really good. We will see. Luke 15, 28 says, And he was, how does the Bible say? Angry. He was angry and would not go in. What does that mean? He's refusing. He's rejecting. He's rejecting the presence of his brother. The repentance that the brother is recognizing now and that is rejected. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. His anger is so big that his father had to come out instead of the father even calling the son to come in because he knew that he was out there. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Oh, Seems like he's starting to have an eye problem, but not from an eye, but from an eye. And then the next verse says, Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandments, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. He's starting to look a little more selfish in his talk. Then we see in verse 30 that he starts increasing his anger in this point. But as soon as this thy son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. What does this phrase mean? But as soon as that, this thy son. <clears throat> Basically what happened here is the elder brother, the prodigal son, is expressing his anger into hatred. He actually hates his brother. He does not consider him his brother. He calls him thy son. He's not my brother. It's your son, but not my brother. That's basically what he's saying. I don't accept him. I will not forgive him. That is what the prodigal son, the elder brother of the prodigal son, is saying about his brother. I do not recognize him as my brother. We are different. We have different goals. We don't communicate with each other. We don't share. So basically, the two same aspects are observed in this second uh, elder brother of the prodigal son in comparing cancer, elder brother, prodigal son, and we will see the third one. Loss of communication between the brothers and no sharing among the brothers. Third aspect. <clears throat> Offshooting groups. Offshooting groups are becoming an issue at the end of time, especially in our church, because they are bringing the same aspects as we can see. What is an offshoot? Offshoot really is an, a bad word. It should not be used that way. It's incorrect, the word offshoot, because it, it really means any person or group that is coming or a gem that is coming from a plant. Same company, same plant is one of them. So we are actually using the word in a different way when we use it. We are actually meaning a person or a group 
who has separated themselves from the church. In reality, as we use the word, we have to use it in the way everybody knows. Whenever somebody talks about offshoot, we are talking about a group that is separating from the church. Talking about our church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we know that it's becoming an issue that there are many people separating from the church. I will not uh, talk about the wrong beliefs. I did already that presentation so you may review wrong beliefs where I cover the three main wrong beliefs that are destroying the membership of our church. <clears throat> but I can be honest with you, all these are not really difficult to deal with. God has given us guidelines. We don't have to be without peace. We can have peace of mind. God never wanted us to separate from the church. He said this is the last church. There will be no other. But when talking about the offshoots, we know, and as we see, and I encourage you to study more about this aspect, the offshoots have the same characteristics of the elder brother of the prodigal son and the disease cancer. Why? When they start seeing themselves, looking at themselves as a different entity, different characteristics, different goals, as we see in the cancer and the prodigal son, elder brother of the prodigal son, then they start communi stop communicating with the members of the church. And beside that, they stop sharing with the members of the church. And there is one aspect that comes with them, as we see. Everything goes around one word. One word comes up. What is the main characteristic among these three things? Cancer the elder brother of the prodigal son, and the offshoot groups. Hatefulness, hatred, that word develops in all of them. What is the main solution? Cooperation. As we see this, then I encourage you to study more from the book, Education, chapter 33. The book Education, chapter 33, is called Cooperation. This word is very significant and very important in the solution of this problem or as a tool to keep us from being deceived in this problem. Let's talk about Ephesians 4.25. Ephesians 4.25 says, For we are members one of another. This aspect of presence, being part of, feeling part of, the knowledge of, no, of being part of a group is very important. And Ephesians tells us that we must feel that in the group we are. Now we will talk about three aspects we know. As the beginning you know me. We have been talking about the home, the church, and the society. Therefore, for us to really see that the society, the church, and the homes will be healthy, we need to see this word. It must run in all. And it says here, <clears throat> in the book, Education, chapter 33, it says, In the formation of character, no other influences count so much as the influence of the home. The teacher's work should supplement that of the parents, but is not to take its place. In all that concerns the well-being of the child, it should be the effort of parents and teachers to cooperate. No question, we know that teachers and parents should work together as a team. Not the fathers criticizing the teacher, or vice versa, the teachers criticizing the parents. It should be a cooperation system. But look what it says after. The work of cooperation should begin with the father and mother 
themselves in the home life. What does that mean? Father and mother should be united. There should be a united front. Respect and cooperation are very important in the marriage life. You may have heard some of my family life presentations before. You know that it is very important that father and mother work together as a team. And then it says here, in the training of their children, they have a joint responsibility and it should be their constant endeavor to act together. Constant endeavor to act together. Unity. Cooperation. Next paragraph says, in the home training of the youth, the principle of cooperation is invaluable. Wow, very important. As I was meditating and studying this chapter, I am telling you, I really enjoy the word cooperation. And we need to develop it more in our homes, in our lives, and our churches, and our society. From their earliest years, children should be led to feel that they are a part of the home firm. So we need to let our children feel that they are part of the home. Very significant. How many times our children actually do not feel part of the home? They may be in. They may ride in the car. They may go with us. But they do not feel part of the home. This same feeling, the lack of being part of, may develop into our hearts and flourish afterward. Next paragraph says, even the little one should be trained to share in the daily work. Should be trained to share in the daily work. And should be made to feel that their help is needed. There is need to wash the dishes. Our son, Kevin, we need you to cooperate in the washing of the dishes. And next aspect is appreciated. So to say thank you, Kevin, for helping us in the cleaning or washing of the dishes. Next paragraph says the older one should be their, <clears throat> their parents' assistants, entering into their plans and sharing their responsibilities and burdens. Let fathers and mothers take time to teach their children. Let them show that they value their help, desire their confidence, and enjoy their companionship. And the children will not be slow to respond. You know, when my children were small, even, you know, small babies, enough age to sit up and move their hands, sometimes um, they will want to help mama as they are with her in the kitchen. So let's say that Kevin see my queen handling the knife to cut tomatoes for the salad. And I will say to my queen, hold his hand, and then you cut with him. And then I teach my Kevin that he never touches the knife alone. He's not allowed to use the knives alone. He cannot touch it when he is alone. He can only handle the knife when mommy has his hand. So I teach him that, and I correct him as is needed. And he learns that he should not touch it. And then when he's with mommy, with my queen, he can help and enjoy the time with mommy cutting the tomatoes. As that goes, he starts enjoying the time with mommy working in the kitchen. So I read the paragraph, this section again. The older one should be their parents' assistants, entering into their plans and sharing their responsibilities and burdens. Let fathers and mothers take time to teach their children, let them show that they value their help, desire their confidence, and enjoy their companionship. 
and the children will not be slow to respond. So I think it is essential that we meditate more about this word cooperation as we see the solution for preventing future problems that are now actually flourishing. Cooperation should be the spirit of the schoolroom, the law of its life, the teacher who gains the cooperation of his pupils secures an invaluable aid in maintaining what? Order. Amazing. What is one of the major problems we have in the world today? Disorder. Yes, there's plenty of disorder. I read again, cooperation should be the spirit of the schoolroom. I suggest also that we think about our homes or our society, the law of its life, the teachers who gain the cooperation of his pupils secure an invaluable aid in maintaining order. The next paragraph says, it would be helpful for the youth and for parents and teachers as well to study the lesson of what? Of cooperation. We will benefit. Teachers also will benefit in studying or parents, is the word of cooperation, because it's important for us also. Among its many illustrations, notice the building of the tabernacle. Did they need cooperation in the building of the tabernacle? For sure. What if someone would say, oh, I will not do the post today that I need to do? What if somebody will else will say, no, I will not work with the metals that I needed to work? The work will be left behind. Cooperation will not be done. And he says there, among its many illustrations, notice the building of the tabernacle. Should we think about our own bodies? Same. What about the church? Same. That object lesson of character building. Meaning, it's a very important aspect for the formation of our characters in the likeness of Jesus. The work operation to me give us part of the solution of the problem. For sure we know. And as I, I referred before in the topic of wrong beliefs, we don't have to doubt. It's very easy now. Whenever you see someone coming to tell you that we must separate from the church because of one reason or another one. As soon as the idea comes to the mind, we must separate from the church. You know it's not God's will. TM 51, uh, 41.1 and other paragraphs that I have in the document, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the last church, is clear saying that God says there, this is the last church. As defective as it's, as it's, as it look, needing reproof, yes, there are many things that may be wrong in the members. It does not mean it's not God's church. It is God's church. This is the last church and it will stand until the end. That's what God says. If that is the case, we have no need of separation. We do not need to separate from God's church. So anytime somebody comes with the idea of we must separate, you know that the enemy is behind that. We should not hear those words. We do not need to continue even speaking with them. We should say thank you, no thank you. I don't need to hear that anymore. And you can go because you know that it's not good. But try to develop the word cooperation in your heart, yourself, as a father, as a mother, as a member of the church, as a brother and sister of a home. And understand that it's very important to feel part of our group, that we make others feel part of our group, and that we share, we communicate with each other. Always encouraging, always hoping, and as we see that, we go back to the beginning where it tells us the verse that we started, Ephesians 4, 
Uh, let me see here where is it I lost the verse I'm so sorry ah here as we see the verse Ephesians 4:25. It says, for we are members one of another. Don't lose that, because as you develop that, you will develop love for each other. Hatred will not develop when you know you are part of a team. When you start thinking that you are not part of a team, that you are different, then problems come. No question, we may not participate in the wrong. Proverbs 1.10 says, If the sinners entice thee, consent not. So that means you're not going to participate in evil. There are many times in the Bible where we see examples of people, un people uniting, yes, as a team, in doing wrong. We do not participate in that. The Tower of Babel. We know that they united efforts to cooperate in that. But it's not what God wants us to do. Therefore, we know that we should not. Proverbs 1.10, don't forget that verse. If the sinners entice thee, consent not. But when we know that we are in a group and we have that feeling of being part of, love will remain a high Hatred will go away. Please meditate about this topic more and more. Ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. And let's make this another way of resolving the problem and preventing more problems into our homes, into our churches, into our societies. That our children learn that they are part of our homes and they enjoy our time together. God bless you. Coming Broadcasting Network.